Applying self-leveling concrete to resurface an old floor can be quite tricky, so I made this really handy contraption out of a 30-gallon trash can that made it way easier. I started with a 30-gallon trash can, and then I got some 2-inch PVC pipe fittings and some PVC cement to make a spigot. Now, I thought that this ball valve in the middle would be handy to turn the flow of concrete on or off. And it sort of worked, but as you'll see later, it caused some problems, and at the end of the video, I'll show an alternative solution that I think will work better next time. I'm gonna be filling up the trash can with about 250 pounds of concrete, so I doubled up some 3 quarter inch plywood to make a nice sturdy base. I'm gonna cut this plywood into sort of an egg shape that will support both the trash can and the spigot that comes out of it. I cut the plywood with a jigsaw and then placed the trash can and spigot. I want the spigot to just hang off the edge of the plywood but be supported by it. So once I saw that everything was lining up, I traced a hole with a sharpie and then cut a hole through the trash can so that the spigot could go right through. I want to keep the holes in the trash can itself to a minimum. So to keep it from sliding, I'm just going to cut a couple circles out of plywood that will fit inside that circular recess that I saw earlier on the bottom of the trash can. I screwed this circle down to the base and now the trash can can fit right over it and won't slide. And to be on the safe side, add a couple of plywood pieces on the outside as well. I poked the PVC pipe through the trash can and then I just glued on a flange just to create a little bit of a positive stop on the inside. I used scraps of plywood to build supports around the spigot and I just screwed those down to the base. I used flex seal to seal around the hole where the pipe goes through the wall of the trash can. There's going to be a lot of weight in this trash can so I made sure to use high quality heavy duty casters. In testing the handle on the ball valve, I noticed that it was pretty difficult to turn even when there was nothing inside. So I just added a screw through the plywood scraps and into the PVC pipe just to really anchor that pipe so that I wouldn't twist the pipe out of the trash can when I tried to open the valve. This is the second resurfaced concrete floor that I've done. The first one was just over plain concrete. This time we're going over this weird kind of linoleum tile. Now we checked to make sure that it wasn't asbestos but scraping it up was a lot of work and it wasn't coming off very clean. So we just removed the baseboards and applied the primer for this Quickcrete self-leveling concrete which is also made by Quickcrete. Our previous attempt at resurfacing a floor <laughs> took a lot of twists and turns and it took two tries to get it right so I was a little bit nervous about trying this new contraption. I learned from the last time to really spend the time to prep your workspace and lay out all the buckets and bags so that you can really move quickly and consistently through the mixing process. I also got a dedicated paddle mixer and it may look like a drill but it's geared a little bit differently with lower RPMs and it's really worth it. This one's about like $49 but when you factor in you're getting a whole new floor for this it's worth getting a machine like this for this type of job. I had Brett and Jesse there to help me and I got them started on the mixing process while I started taking the mixed buckets and dumping them into the trash can and wouldn't you know it I left the valve open. What a fail. I immediately went to close the valve and I could actually hear the little bits of sand in the concrete mix scraping against the ball valve and it was kind of difficult to shut. After a little effort, I was able to turn it all the way and then fill up the trash can with about five five gallon buckets. <laughs> I was starting to lose confidence in thinking that I was in for another flooring fail, but once it got going, everything went really smoothly. And I'm glad I used big high quality wheels because rolling right through that spill from leaving the valve open was no big deal. I probably could have gotten away with one and a half inch diameter PVC pipe, but once I got the whole system going, it went real smoothly and this was so much easier on my back than hand pouring each bucket one at a time. This trash can system also made it really easy to keep the pour consistent. It was sort of like a soft serve ice cream machine and I just had to slowly wheel the trash can all around. When I got into corners, I just pushed it in and let it sit for a little bit longer while it filled all the way out and it turned a stressful process into kind of a calm and meditative one. I used 12 bags of the Quickcrete self-leveling concrete and I just kept pouring buckets into the trash can as soon as Jesse and Brett mixed them. This room is about 12 by 14 feet and we resurfaced the entire floor in just about 45 minutes. Now before I show you how the floor turned out and what improvements I would make to this contraption, let's hear a word from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Extra Space Storage. 
I have a lot of furniture to make these days for both my new house and the hotel that I'm developing. And I need a storage facility where I can safely store the stuff during the construction process. Extra Space Storage is the most professional, cleanest, and most modern storage facility that I have used, and I highly recommend them. I signed up and was able to do all of the administrative work online super fast, and the facilities are super clean, well-maintained, and even came with a lock. And not a lock that could easily be cut off with bolt cutters or an angle grinder. It's actually integrated into the door for this unit. But what I appreciated the most was just how well the website works. You can actually see a map to pick your unit and make sure that you have direct vehicular access to it. And they have a really clear breakdown of what's available, the different sizes with nice little diagrams that suggest how much stuff you can fit in each unit. So shout out to Extra Space Storage for sponsoring this video and check the link in the description. The floors came out great and they're just the first step for this bedroom renovation project. I'm going to be doing an updated version of my floating bed along with some built-in wall cabinets and a window seat. The concrete is walkable after a few days and the color evens out over time. The first bedroom that we did is now fully furnished and looks fantastic. The cost for this flooring system comes out to about two to three dollars per square foot but the real value in my mind is the speed. Okay, so the device sort of worked, but here's where I think things went a little bit wrong and where I would do them differently next time. So the problem was this valve. And if you look inside, it's this like ball in here that turns when you turn this. Now one, even without any sort of friction or concrete in this, it's not an easy turn. You really gotta kind of crank on it. And it's a plastic handle, so if you push it really hard and there's even more resistance, you're in danger of breaking it. So this is just not a very forgiving mechanism for anything that involves, well, a viscous or kind of granular mix into the liquid. What I should have done is used a tip on the downspout that had outside threads. So if you look at this piece, it's smooth on the inside with threads on the outside with a cap. This way the concrete could have just poured right out of here and then I could have just taken this cap and closed it off. Still some grit would get into the threads but would still be able to close it. Um, and not too hard to clean when you take it off and just wipe it down with a rag when you're all done. So if I do this again, this is what I'm using. Now as I said before, this is the second time I've done this type of concrete resurfacing. And I really like the material. I love the way it looks. This kind of like, almost reminds me of like sand at the beach where the waves kind of create those scallops. It's cost effective and the overall aesthetic is great. So <laughs> I think if I ever do this for the third time, I'll really nail it, but who knows? So far I've been uh, uh, very fail prone with this particular application of concrete. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.